Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are y'all doing this morning? Man, I am very nervous. <laughs> y'all have been really encouraging so far, and it's really touched me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when uh, Pastor Bobby first asked me to preach, man, I feel like I got attacked by so many fears. Things like, uh, oh, you're too young to preach, or, oh, you've never spoken for 30 minutes, or uh, I had this one, it's like, um, I had this one fear hit me, and I thought, man, maybe I don't have to preach now, but maybe when I'm older and have experience, I can preach, but I really felt God help me overcome those fears and take them down, and um, this, he spoke to me one morning, two days after Pastor Bobby asked me to preach. I, uh, in, I read devotions every morning, and uh, in this devotion, it usually ends with a quote, and this one quote really spoke to me, and it's uh, by John Calvin. It says, uh, he who disregards his calling will never keep the straight path and the duties of his work. And that, that really spoke to me. I felt like God put that, that quote right there in the day I needed it to pursue this and decided to, you know what, I'm going to preach today. Have any of you ever done something over and over again and you didn't necessarily know it was wrong, but you did it? There was a... Uh, one time when I was four, actually, I did this many times, but when I was four and I would take showers, I used conditioner for body wash. Now, my reasoning behind that is there's body wash and there's hair wash. Hair wash is used to wash your hair and body wash is used to wash your body. Now, I knew that shampoo was like a fancy word for hair wash, so I was like, okay, maybe conditioner is just a fancy word for body wash. <laughs> So then uh, three years later, me and my sister got in a little argument of whether conditioner is used for your hair or for your body. I was like, it's used, for your, it's used to wash your body. It's just a fancy word for body wash. And she's like, no, it's used to wash your hair. I was like, really? <laughs> so I went to the only person I knew who could verify something like this. I went to mom. I was like, hey, mom, is, uh, is conditioner, is it used to wash your hair or to wash your body? She told me it's used to wash your hair. I was like, oh, I bet... <laughs> I've been using it to wash my body all this time. She's like, oh, it's okay if you use it a few times. I was like, no, no, no. I've been doing this since I was four. <laughs> and then I saw the shock on her face. <laughs> but have you ever done something over and over again? And maybe you just didn't know it was wrong. But when you found out, did you stop or did you keep going? Let's see what uh, Paul has to say here in Galatians chapter 5. You can turn to it if you got your paper Bibles or your phones, or the screens. <laughs> now, Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians, and the Galatians, it's actually not a city, it's actually a region, and they used to be called uh, the Celts. It was a barbarian tribe called the Celts, or more, maybe more commonly known as the Gauls. And later, the west side of Galatia was like, you know what, we gotta come up with a better name to dif differentiate ourselves from the east side of Galatia. So they're like, you know what, let's call ourselves the gallo -Gratians. I mean, it sounds cool, right? <laughs> Cooler than Celts or Gauls. And uh, later, that's the word Gratians, that's where the word Galatia or Galatians comes from. And the Galatian, or Galatians, it's a mix of Jew and Gentile. And at the time Paul was uh, writing this letter to them, they often wondered, so the Jews, what they would do, they would follow the law of Moses thoroughly, they would live it. Now, they were wondering, do the Gentiles there have to do it? And uh, Gentiles are someone who's not a Jew. But they always wondered, do the Gentiles, do they have to read it and live it out just like the Jews? Or maybe they just have to look at it, maybe read it or know it? But uh, Paul here is trying to tell them the truth about this matter. He tell, in the, let's do Galatians chapter five, verse one. It says, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burned again by the yoke of slavery. And Paul is almost drawing this idea. Have you uh, ever heard uh, the wages of my sin is death? I believe that's Romans 6, 23, somewhere around there. Um, Paul uses that, or he uses this verse almost as a picture, I can see. He's almost using us sin as like a slave owner, and us sinners are the slaves. But then Jesus Christ, when he died on that cross, he came and set us free. And then he gives us a really specific command. Then do not let your souls be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. If you were a slave and you were told that you were free, would you take that freedom and run and leave? 
Or would you stay back and keep working? I'm gonna skip verses two through 12, mostly because it's not really relevant to what I wanna talk about today. But what Paul is saying in there is he's mostly saying, if you wanna follow this law, well, you're gonna have to follow the entire law. And guess what, you're gonna fail, you're gonna make mistakes, you're not gonna do it well. And then he goes on, and he's like, well, actually, if you follow this law, sooner or later, you're, you're gonna lose your salvation, and you're gonna lose Jesus, and you're not, you might, may or, may or may not know it. And then he concludes that two through 12 with, you know, I used to te- preach the law of Moses, and then I realized that the law has been fulfilled. And then here, and then he goes in to verse 13, which kind of restates verse one. It says, you, or I'll do 13 through 15. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. Paul's saying quite a bit in those three verses. But 13, verse 13 specifically, if you isolate that one, it's really, it's very similar to verse one. I'll read them both side by side. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Then 13 says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. So in both of those verses, he's saying, guess what? You're set free. Now, he uses the word slavery or serve. Um, He uses those two words. In uh, Greek, they're the same word, but one is in the noun form and the other's in the verb form. So the Greek word for slavery, and I'm probably gonna mispronounce this because I use Google. (laughs) But... (laughs) <laughs> the noun form of slavery or serve is doleia, and the, the verb form is doloevo. And we have similar words like this in English. Like I could say, we praise God, and that wor- in that sentence, praise would be the verb. Now I could also say, God is given praise, and in that sentence, praise would be the noun. And it's the same thing here with that Greek word. Uh, doleia, doleuevo. One's in the noun, which is doleia, and the other's in the verb, which is doleuevo. And they're the word for, that's the word for slavery, slave, or serve. And it's kind of interesting what Paul does here. In verse one, he uses, the, he uses the noun form, and he's like, Christ has set us free. Now don't go back to your life of slavery. And then in 13, he says, you're free. Don't go back to your life of slavery, but serve one another in love. He uses that same word, but to give a different contrary idea, serve one another humbly in love. And that can be kind of hard sometimes just to serve someone. Sometimes we get caught up and, oh, I'm thinking about myself, I'm thinking about myself. You know what, let's just not think about anything else, just myself. And that's, that's not a good path. That's usually really dangerous. Now, when we, have, when we start to think, I want to serve people, we usually, that's, that first step is usually just humility. You know, I'm, I'm not going to think about myself today. I'm going to think about others in little situations and big situations and then serve one another humbly in love. It can be kind of tricky sometimes, but just think, what is something you really don't like to do? Maybe t- it could be a chore. It could be maybe doing a favor for someone, something out of your comfort zone. Maybe just talking to someone at a place, maybe someone that might not look like they are someone who's everyone talks to, maybe they look overlooked or ignored. But we can still just talk to them. Not in an offensive way. I guess I just found out that could be offensive if you tell them, you're overlooked and ignored. I'm going to talk to you. (laughs) But maybe not like that. (laughs) But just talk to them. Have a good conversation. Or maybe just do, maybe in your house, do the hardest chore, like something that no one likes to do. Or maybe just do something kind for someone out of humility and love. Mostly love, though. And then verse 14 really kind of backs up or verifies 13. It says, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And both of those, 13 and 14, they're really close. They corroborate. That's a cool word that my dad taught me. 
<laughs> he, he, he uses the, the dictionary a lot, and he's taught me some of those words. And I was like, wow, I can have a bigger vocabulary now. <laughs> Anyways, that was very irrelevant. But then, <laughs> and then uh, Paul uses uh, verse 15 to kind of see the contrary, the contrasting idea. It says, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. Now, on that, that uh, verse, does he actually mean like biting and devouring each other? It's pretty graphic. But maybe he means more that as a metaphor, but maybe he's using it more to say, don't pick on each other, don't argue, don't get angry easily, don't find it easy to get angry. I just realized I reworded those two sentences. And then he says, watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. Have you ever, you probably haven't done this because I know we're all smart, but have you ever decided, you know what, I'm going to step on a fire ant pile with flip-flops? <laughs> so what happens, yeah, you kill a bunch of them. Yeah, now you got 20 that won't bite you, but now you got like 40 that will bite you. And now in that, you're both hurting each other, and now no one gets anything good out of that, not you or the fire ants. Uh, let's move on to uh, verses 16 through 18. It says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is, desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That is a mouthful right there. <laughs> but... He's really trying to spell it out, make it really clear that the flesh and the spirit, they're not the same thing. In fact, they contradict. They're very contrary to each other. You can't be both in the spirit and the flesh. You can't live both of them at the same time. You can't, and in other words, you can't hate and love someone at the same time. It's impossible. It's either false love, in other words, hate, or it's some really random part of hate. And in that case, it's really just hate. There is no love when you hate and love at the same time. But he's trying to get this idea is the spirit and the flesh, you can't live by both at the same time. They're completely different. And then he adds an 18, but if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. You're not, if you're led by the spirit, the spirit won't lead down. The Holy Spirit, he'll guide you. He'll, he'll do what God wants you to do, not sin, because sin, God is not sin. The Holy Spirit is not sin. In fact, Christ is freedom. So if Christ is freedom and Christ is God and he's the Holy Spirit, then the Spirit is freedom and God is freedom. And they don't want us to use this freedom to sin because that's what Paul commanded us in verse 1 and verse 13, verse 15. Do not go back to your old life of sin or slavery. He uses the word slavery, but he's drawn the picture of sin. Don't go back to your old life of sin. You're set free. So, so far, Paul's told us, or told us, not told, that's not a word. <laughs> so far, Paul has told us that you're free. Now, do not go back to your life of slavery or sin. And then he says in verse 13, you're free. Now, do not go back to your life of sin. Rather, serve one another in love. And verse 14 backs up 13, saying, love your, the whole law, the whole Bible is fulfilled in one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, so far, he's saying you're free. Now, don't, don't sin, but rather love one another, serve one another. And, if, and then he keeps going, he, he keeps going, he says, if you bite and devour each other, you'll be destroyed by one another. And then, he may, and then he tries to make it clear that the spirit and the flesh, they contradict. They can't, you can't be in both at the same time. You're either one or the other. And Paul encourages us to live by the spirit and not by the flesh, like he said over and over again in this chapter. And then in verse 19 through 21, he talks about what the flesh is. And then verses 22 to 24, really just 23 though, he talks about what the spirit is. So let's go through 19 through 21. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
So far, Paul has warned us over and over again. You're, well, not warned. He tells us and then warns. You're free. And now do not go back to your life of sin. And then he keeps going and saying and gives us commands. Love one another instead. And watch out. Because if, if, if you keep arguing, if you get angry easily, if you fight, you're going to destroy one another. And then he makes it clear that the spirit and the flesh are not the same. And then verses 19 through 21 he, gets, he goes into the flesh what the flesh is, and then he states that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So now he puts like the worst thing that could happen if you live by the flesh. It leads to destruction. And then verses, and then now he's going to talk about the, what the spirit is in verses 22 through 24. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I like that last one. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those are the people who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Those who choose to live by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, by God, and not by their own flesh, by what their own desires are. And he makes it very clear in verses 19 through 21 that when we live by the flesh, we're going to sin. But he also makes it very clear that when we live by the Spirit, we're not going to sin. But rather, it's going to be more beautiful. We're going to be loving, joyful, have peace with one another, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, it's cool to say it, but how do we live it? Have you ever tried to eat healthy before? <laughs> What's like the first few things we do? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing when we're, yeah, that's the first part, what we're doing. But the first part to not eat unhealthy, but rather eat healthy, is we, first of all, we stop eating unhealthy things. Secondly, we go to the grocery store and buy healthy foods, not candy or no Reese's or anything, <laughs> just healthy foods. <laughs> And then, and then you come home, eat the healthy foods, and then lastly, you notice a difference. You feel different. You feel stronger sometimes, unless it's all processed food. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how do we do that spiritually? Maybe, we're strugg- maybe some of us ha- are struggling with maybe one of these things, or maybe something similar that maybe... Didn't, wasn't mentioned in 19 through 21. 19 through 21 mentions sins that we could do with this, with the, when we're living by the flesh. Now, maybe you're struggling with one of those, or maybe you're not. Maybe, or maybe you feel like you haven't been struggling at all. But maybe, maybe you might have said something or done something recently, and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe it's a small thing, or maybe it's something as bad as this. But first step, just stop. And then a good, another way to help with that is pray. Ask God, like, you admit that you're wrong. Like, God, I'm, I'm struggling. I've done this over and over again. Whatever sin it may be, just bring it to him. Honest, full. Find a quiet time and just be honest with him. Tell him everything. And then tell him that you just want to stop. You're done with it. And then secondly, what you could do, it might may or may not, you, you can try this, but just replace it with the fruits of the Spirit. And maybe if you, you struggle, like, well, maybe I, I struggle with getting angry. How do I fix that? Well, what's the opposite of anger? You can use Google. <laughs> yeah. But patience is a good one. Love or kindness and then ask God, God, I want to be kind today, or I want to be patient today. I don't want to, when I, whenever I would, would normally get angry, God, I just want to be patient instead and replace it. And then when the time comes and where you would usually get angry, you say, you know what? I'm going to be patient right now. I'm not going to get angry because I usually would, but this time I'm going to play it different. I'm going to pray first before it happens or maybe after it happens and just be patient about it. And then you'll notice, like, wow, it feels different when it, without anger. Now I just don't feel, 
I don't feel the hate that I once had, the malice I once had. You just feel, it feels different. And then it might feel different for that person too that you were usually angry at. And then that person might be encouraged and like how, how you're usually angry at this time. Maybe they might not say that, but they might think it. And we can do that with any of the fruits of the Spirit. We can do it with love. We can do it with joy. Joy, that's a hard one sometimes. How do you find joy? There's not really, not that I could think of, but there's not really a sin that contradicts that, unless there's one that y'all can think of that I can't. Yeah, sadness maybe. But how do, we find, how do we get better at being joyful? One of the things I, f- I really feel like helps with being joyful is just be thankful. Thank God for everything. And each day when, when you pray with God, think of something very specific that maybe he did yesterday or maybe you're doing something fun today or tomorrow or whatever it may be. Maybe you got something new or maybe you've met someone you really liked, whatever it is, just thank God for that person, for that thing, whatever it may be. And you'll find that you'll be way more joyful. And then always know that not everything you have will be there forever. Not everything here is eternal. One day it will be taken away. And when it is, just remember the good times you had with that person or with that whatever it was. Maybe you had a really good chocolate bar. You're like, oh, that was so good, but now it's gone. (laughs) Oh, man. <laughs> Just remember what it tasted like and the joy it brought you. And then, <laughs> and then when it's gone, you're like, oh, thank you, God, that I had that chocolate bar. It was good. Probably not healthy, but it was good. <laughs> and then kindness and love. I always thought those two things were the same, but they're, they're not. They're a little different, but they're very similar. See, kindness, I always thought, I always thought kindness and love were the same, but kindness, I see it more as you decide, you know what, I'm not going to think about myself, I'm going to think about other people. Now I see love as you're only thinking about one person, but you're being really empathetic empathetic about it. You're like, I'm going to think of all their needs, and usually love, usually you're going to have to sacrifice something. Usually, not like kill a lamb and uh, do a burnt offering, but like sacrifice as in, you're gonna have to give something up. Maybe it's time, maybe it's money. And kindness is more like, I'm gonna think about people and do good things for them. And then that made me think, well, is goodness the same thing as kindness? But me personally, I don't know enough, I haven't defined goodness, I don't know enough about goodness to talk about it but I know it is good. (laughs) But just each day, think about maybe you have something you're struggling with and just think, maybe today instead of getting angry, I'm going to be patient with a person or I'm going to be kind to that person instead of getting angry. Maybe replace those sins with something of the fruit of the Spirit. And another thing, if, if you ever feel the Holy Spirit talk to you, and so I do this a lot, I always wonder, like, is that really the Holy Spirit? But a good thing, a good way you can verify is read the fruits of the Spirit. I mean, you read them, and then know them, and then say, okay, is what the Holy Spirit, or what I think is the Holy Spirit telling me to do, is what he's telling me to do, is it love, is it joy? Is it peace? Is it for parents? If, it can, if you can check off all the lists, then it is. Because the spirit, it can't deceive, or yourself can't deceive you. Well, I guess yourself can't deceive you. What I'm trying to say is the spirit won't deceive you. The spirit won't deceive you at all. Now yourself, you, you, you yourself can. And it's usually, it's good to have doubts, but you can't, you can't, only believe doubts. You have to hear the truth too. And by, sorry, by doubts, I mean, you can question things is what I'm saying when you can have doubts. You can question things. Now, you can't be on, you have to look at both sides. But with the Holy Spirit, a good way to verify it is, does it align with the fruits of the Spirit? 
Because that, that is what the Holy Spirit is, and that's what the Holy Spirit is going to tell you. And maybe he might be telling you, go pray for this person. Sometimes you might just need courage to do that. And then, I don't know, I don't I see a timer anywhere, but I don't know if we're going way over or way under, but <laughs> last thing I would like to conclude with is uh, verse 25. I really like this one. It says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And once you start living by the Holy Spirit, you'll be more used to what the Holy Spirit sounds like, what the Holy Spirit says to you. Maybe you, have, maybe you see the Holy Spirit in dreams and visions, or maybe you hear an actual voice and you don't know who it is. You're like, there's no one in this room. It's the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, maybe you just know, like, I really feel like, I really feel that the Holy Spirit's telling me to do something. And if you, if you still question and you're like, I don't know if this is actually the Holy Spirit, read the, whole, the fruits of the Spirit. Does it align with it? And most of the time, it, well, if it is the Holy Spirit, it will. There's no doubt about that. But lastly, since we are living by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So this week, let's live by the Holy Spirit in every part of our lives. I'm going to be wrapping up here, so the band, if you want, you can make your way here. <laughs> um, but let's live by the Holy Spirit today, tomorrow, this week, and forever. Um, I'm going to close this out in prayer, and we'll sing praises to God. Dear Lord, forgive us, Lord, for when we mess up, when we make mistakes. Lord, today, this week, Lord, may we change, may we experience, Lord, the Holy Spirit. Maybe if, if we've seen it many times, maybe if this is the first time, Lord, may we truly experience your voice, Lord. And may we not only hear it, but may we obey it, Lord. God, thank you, Lord, that we are a church, Lord, a loving church, a church that encourages one another, Lord. God, may we have a good rest of this day, Lord, good rest of this week. May you be with us always, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die, Lord, to set us free from the sin. God, thank you, Lord. Amen.